Now, in your notes, if you turn to this section called pulse sequences, and just look over your shoulder, so you will find that there is this menu at the beginning. We'll talk about that in a little bit, not right now. There's some sort of narrative notes, but at the back, there is a whole series of diagrams. And you might want to be looking at those diagrams as we go forward. It'll help you avoid having to, if you want to write down what I'm drawing up here, a lot of it'll sort of already, already be there and it's, it's kind of an easier way to, to take notes. So the first of these pulse sequences that I have is labeled pulse and acquire. And if you look at this diagram, you'll see that all it is, and I'll talk about the nature of this, this type of a diagram in a minute, but all I'm showing you here is this example we've talked about again and again where we turn on our RF to knock the magnetization down 90 degrees into the transverse plane and then simply observe what is happening to that signal over time. So we know that at the time of that RF we will have some maximum amount of signal amplitude and if we watch what happens, it goes away over time. And we can connect the peaks of this curve. This is T2 star, right, is the time constant that governs it. And this is called a free induction decay. So I stuck this one in here just to kind of demonstrate the most basic way in which we can generate and sample an MR signal. This is not something that's really ever used in imaging. Uh, although it is used in some of the preparatory steps that are taken before you scan the patient. Right. Now if you look at these diagrams, right, so when you look at any sort of you know, text or technical article on MR speaking about a, an acquisition method, you will always see these pulse sequence diagrams. So the first thing I just want to do is give you a sense of what exactly it is that we're looking at. Most of what we're going to talk about now this morning, these are things that we've really already talked about before. Uh, and, and hopefully this will sort of gel together a lot of the things that we've been discussing. But the pulse sequence is simply a description of the timeline of what we do in order to generate and measure the MR signal. So when you look at these diagrams, they will have a series of lines, a series of these horizontal lines. And depending on you know, who has drawn it, there might be different uh, approaches as to how to label these. But Suffice it to say, right, that this is all a timeline that progresses from left to right. And these lines are showing us what is going on with three different components of the MR system. Right, the top line is the RF, and the next three lines are the gradient magnetic field. <coughs> Now, rather than label these as X, Y, or Z, I'm going to label these as slice, phase, and frequency. Obviously, depending on the type of image you're interested in getting, and specifically its orientation, whether these are X, Y, Z, Z, Y, X, or some combination of obliques is going to just depend on the orientation of your slice. But, of course, each of these three represent gradients that are orthogonal to each other. They all have to be oriented at 90 degrees to each other. So all we're going to do now is simply map out the steps that are involved in generating an image. 
So the first of those is that we have to turn on our RF. And these sort of little boxes or oval sy symbols are representing the duration of time that we turn this item on for. And its height is telling us the amplitude at which we turn it on. So this little box is designed to represent what it takes to generate a 90 degree rotation of the longitudinal magnetization to the transverse plane. And we've said already that the slice select gradient must be on at the time that we transmit that RF in order to select the slice. In the absence of this slice select gradient, what do we do? We excite the spins throughout the entire patient, sample, whatever it happens to be, whatever is in reach of the RF coil that's generating our radio frequency pulse. So at this point we've selected a slice. Next is that we have to turn on a phase encoding gradient, which is turned on at some amplitude for some period of time. And following that, we have to turn on a frequency encoding gradient and we turn it on during the period of time that we are going to sample which is centered at TE. Okay. So this would sort of be our simplest example of what it takes to generate an MR signal.